Deadpool and Wolverine is the third film in the Deadpool franchise, featuring Ryan Reynolds as the titular character, and also is the final film in the 20th Century Fox produced era of Marvel movies. Disney Studios acquired 20th Century Fox, so it goes without saying that it was eagerly anticipated to see how the, the Fox universe is merged into the overall Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they already have begun that with uh, dropping teases of uh, X-Men crossovers and we'll soon be getting the, uh, the new Fantastic Four. Uh, the fascinating thing about the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the multiverse, which is basically the multiverse is uh, taking what we know and then considering an alternative possibility and seeing that take place in that universe. So as taking the notion of the moral of the, uh, the multiverse is that the Fox universe of films can pretty much exist in their own universe. So in theory, characters from that universe can cross over into the main MCU as we know it. So that is the conceit of the of the multiverse, and the multiverse has been a uh, a overall arc that Marvel has been exploring over this phase. We have phase five, phase five, phase six. Uh, I've I've lost track as to which phase we're in, but whatever phase we're in, the multiverse is heavy in this in this phase. Uh, we've seen it in, in WandaVision, in Loki, in uh, Doctor Strange, in the uh, Multiverse of Madness, in, in Spider Man: No Way Home. And Deadpool and Wolverine dives into that conceit of the multiverse and fully embraces it and, and exploits it to, to the limits, at least to the limits that they can do within an R-rated movie without going over, overboard and, uh, and uh, NC-17. So Deadpool and Wolverine basically is in the timeline or in the alternate universe that Deadpool exists in. Uh, his timeline is in jeopardy and is slowly fading away. And the reason being is that each timeline has a specific anchor being, which is basically the one person or being or, or entity or what have you, which holds that timeline together. And in this case, Deadpool wants to save his timeline. And the only way to do that is by fighting the anchor being for his timeline, which turns out to be Logan, Wolverine. Wolverine died, sorry, spoilers, Wolverine died in Logan, and that was it. So, enter the multiverse. There are other Logans out there, just not the Logan we grew up watching and loving. We know that character has sadly passed away. But Deadpool finds himself another Lo another Wolverine, another Logan to help him out. And then multiversal madness and chaos ensues from that point on. Um, Story-wise, that, that, that conceit is like cool, but that, that's really all there is. And it's just a matter of all kinds of random multiversal theme scenes and set pieces thrown together to drive the story from point A, I got to get it by myself a Wolverine, to point B, we got to save my universe, and hey, it looks like we got to save the entire universe. So that it's, it's pretty basic, and overall, shockingly, it actually works. Um, this could have turned out to be a, in a, a, a mess of a movie, but it was actually very, for me, it was very entertaining, very funny, very chaotic, very, very, very bloody. And bottom line was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I found moments where I was thinking about, it's like, hey, if he did this, wouldn't that happen? Or why isn't this person getting involved in this situation? And, and stuff like that, which I'm sure is what most common viewer or fan will, will, will wonder. But you get caught up in, in the fun of it, and you're just like, all right, whatever, just go along for the ride. And in that instant, I pretty much enjoyed it. 
I'm sure a multiple viewings and, and, and nitpicking and really, really uh, pulling at the threads that it, did, it could unravel. But for me, I really enjoyed it and found it pretty funny. So in this film, of course, Ryan Reynolds returns. And then we have the return of Hugh Jackman as, as Wolverine, this time as a variant of Wolverine. And not just that, he appears as multiple variants of Wolverine in a, a very entertaining montage which includes a unexpected cameo. And speaking of cameos is that I've read up or at least heard rumors of certain people showing up as, as characters uh, that they played before in the Fox universe. And I'm thinking, okay, that's cool. But there were actually characters and actors who I had no idea was going to be in this movie. And I was quite surprised and I was not expecting it. And this one of them, one of the Wolverine variants that, that Deadpool comes across is played by none other than Henry Cavill. Yes, Superman. Superman from the DC Universe is playing a Wolverine dubbed as a, as a Cavalrine by Deadpool. I was not expecting that. I just, I was laughing when I saw that. I was like, that was unexpected. And I'm like, that is really cool. So we uh, got variants of Wolverine and uh, Hugh Jackman's performance as Wolverine is very different from the Wolverine we know. Um, and he, he, I think he's even more brutal than we remember him ever being uh, depicted as because obviously the previous films were PG-13. So this one's R-rated so they can go all out and he is viciously brutal in his attacks. And... Uh, and his uh, personality is rather endearing in a gruff and gritty kind of way. But he's still the Wolverine we all love and appreciate it. And this is a a, uh, a comic book act, well, with the exception of the height. Costume-wise, it's comic book accurate, or at least close enough. And uh, one of the great moments was the reveal of that he actually has the classic cowl. And when he, it, that he dons that... It was like uh, almost like an Avengers Assemble moment, or when or when Cap uh, holds Mjolnir. It was like it's like oh that's cool. Um, in addition to to uh, Hugh Jackman's term, we got Emma Corrin playing Cassandra Nova, who is a twin, and she has been exiled into the void uh, by the TVA. Uh, we also have returning characters from Deadpool: are uh, Marina Baccarin as Vanessa, Rob Delaney as Peter, Leslie Uggams as Blind Al. Um, and who else we got, uh, Brandon Hildebrand as, uh, Negasonic Teenage, uh, Warhead, and, um, that's just from the, uh, the Deadpool universe, and being that this is a multiverse film, obviously there are going to be crossovers, and we get a boatload of crossovers from the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and then some, actually. Uh, just to uh, dive into some of the people we see, uh, John Favreau is, returns as Happy. Um, Daphne Keene is back as Laura X-23. Um, Aaron Stanford returns as Pyro. Uh, Ray Park returns as Toad. Tyler Maine returns as uh, Sabretooth. Um... And then we have the uh, unexpected uh, crossovers of the Fox characters. And we see Jennifer Garner returns as Elektra, which was I kind of knew about and I thought it was cool. And I was hoping to see Ben Affleck returning as a Daredevil, but that did not happen. Um, yet, uh, who else do we get? Channing Tatum appears as Gambit. Now, granted, he, he he it was set up at Fox, but the Gambit movie never happened, and the way that they handle Gambit in this movie is great, with uh, countless meta nods to the state of the movie and and the character, and uh, how Channing Tatum never got to play the character in full, and here we get to see a live action version of Gambit that I think. 
I'm not well versed enough on X-Men, but I've seen like clips from X-Men 97 and saw Game of the Action. I think he does Day and Channing do a more than adequate job of depicting him in live action. Um, another uh, surprise, but not so surprising because it was kind of like rumored and, and confirmed, was that uh, Chris Evans appears as Johnny Storm in this. And that was handled in a very funny and hilarious fashion and it's it's really entertaining to see him embracing another Marvel character that he first uh, portrayed and basically just plays with the expectations when you're expecting it to be the other guy and then it turns out to be this guy so that was pretty funny and additional uh, appearances is uh, obviously with uh, this being a crossover event as Deadpool, we obviously see multiple Deadpools and we get a, a plethora of Deadpools, uh, like La a Lady Deadpool's uh, voice by Blake Lively. Whether or not she's in the actual suit, I don't know. Um, Matthew McConaughey voices one of the uh, one of the um, one of the Deadpools. Uh, I can't remember the character. I want to say the Cowboy Deadpool, and uh, Nathan Fillion. Uh, provides the voice for Headpool. And but there are a lot of lot of lot of lot of Deadpools in here. We got Nice Pool, who uh, is played by Ryan Reynolds, who is like the nice nice version uh, of, of Deadpool. And that that was pretty funny. Um so basically story wise, a lot of the elements are not fully explained, but I think they do a good enough job of providing you with just enough information for you to make sense of everything without having seen the previous multiverse connected uh, IP like What If or, or Loki or WandaVision or Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness or Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, there are references to various events in, in said films and, and Disney Plus series and especially you considering Loki how it's very connected to the uh, the TVA um, and characters appear from the TVA and they and certain like events like uh, and actions like pruning are, are more more explained there than they are here and um, at the end of Loki season two uh, Loki uh, is the uh, the uh, the master of stories or, or whatever his actual title is and I was kind of surprised that Loki what didn't get involved in any events or unless he was actually influencing certain certain events throughout this movie but we don't know um, but like I said it's like they do it they do a good job of providing you with enough information to make sense of the the mayhem that is ongoing here and it, it'll benefit view, viewers who have not seen other multiverse you know connected ip to uh, check those out just so you have a better idea where things are going especially since this is just going to continue on through till i imagine till the end of uh avengers secret wars which is uh in 2027 so we'll have a couple more years of this uh the film was directed by sean levy and uh, and written by uh Five writers, no less, uh, Levy, Ryan Reynolds, Rhett Reese, Paul Warnick, and uh, Zeb Wells. And it, it does a great job of bringing together the Fox Universe and the Marvel Studios MCU in a, in a satisfying way. And puts it in a nice position where they can just branch off and do whatever they feel is necessary to bring things together especially when it comes to the x-men which i think is really the last thing that needs to be introduced into the mcu considering uh, we're getting the fantastic four next year um and and apparently uh, dr doom in a couple years uh, in the 2026 in avenger doomsday featuring a doom uh a Victor Von Doom variant played by Robert Downey Jr. no less. So, um, in my uh, non-spoiler review, I uh, gave Deadpool and Wolverine four stars out of five. 
I found it a really entertaining and funny film, despite the the uh, the threadbare story. I, I found the set pieces very entertaining and the humor was very funny, and there really weren't any slow spots. It was just nonstop mayhem and and bloody violence, which I found entertaining and far from and definitely not off-putting. I just found it really like insane just how far they pushed the envelope when it came to the the brutality that Deadpool and Wolverine do to each other, but. It's a, it's a fun and entertaining ride and definitely worth checking out. And um, incidentally, I did see this in IMAX, so if it's still playing in IMAX, I say check it out, in 3D especially, only because in 3D, the uh, I don't know how it plays in 2D, but in 3D, the the uh, the effects actually break the uh, the plane and uh, bleed out into the masking, uh, the, the black borders at the top and the bottom of the screen. So I've seen that before in like Guardian and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and like uh, Ghostbusters uh, reboot. So it's a it's a really cool uh, visual effect that they do, and that's definitely worth checking out in that in uh, that respect. So Deadpool and Wolverine, four stars out of five. So it's been a week. So have you seen Deadpool and Wolverine? What did you think? What did you think of all the surprise cameos and and, and crossovers? Uh, did you think in the end that it really worked out well for for Fox universe and uh, and one last detail is uh, the they have a nice homage to Fox and the uh, the Marvel films that Fox produced and there is and there is a post credit scene that ties into events involving Johnny Storm so so again what do you think of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine and um, what do you hope that they'll do with these characters in the in the near future if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button to help uh, boost the, uh, let the algorithm know that you like this kind of content. Comment below and share your thoughts and any ideas you may have. And hit that bell button to, uh, so that you can be notified when the next time I post a new video. So until next time, my friends, we'll see you at the movies.